Okay, I'm going to call to order this special meeting of the Hillsburg City Council. Uh, it is February 26, 2018. It's 5 p.m. and let the record reflect everybody is here, all five council members. And I would love to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. So at this time, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve our agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, clearly passes. Okay, moving on. If you look at our agenda, it says public comments on non-agenda items, and I would like to um, have the staff report and the new business item be opened, and then we would, in fact, entertain the public comments. If that's pleasing this council, that, okay. No, I was told that non-agenda items and the only thing on the agenda tonight is new business measure V. So I believe it's appropriate for us to just take public comment after the staff report. So if that pleases the council, I'd like to make that move in terms of process. Okay, so we're moving on now to new business, which is the measure V survey results. So as everyone knows, um, each year we have a measure V decision to make in terms of the revenues from that special tax and the projects and expenditures um, to date will be reported on. We'll also receive the results of the survey and consider input on how Measure V funds should be allocated for 2018-2019 within the funding priorities. So this evening we're going to provide direction to staff for budget allocation. So to begin I'd like to um, turn the mic over to Assistant City Manager I below. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, just like the Mayor said, I'm going to be reporting on the 2018-19 Measure V. The goal of this meeting is to present the results of the Measure V survey and to receive direction from Council as to how to allocate the Measure V funds for the fiscal year 18-19 budget. Um, upcoming meetings as part of the budget process include the March 26th goal setting meeting, the April 9th community input meeting. We'll also do a budget 101 session during that meeting as well as introduce the CIPs. Then we'll have two study sessions on May 14th and the 24th. The first one focusing on the general fund and the next one focusing on all other funds and then with a goal of budget adoption on June 6th. A little bit of Measure V history. On July 16th, 2012, the Council adopted a resolution setting the date for an election on a proposed measure seeking voter approval to enact a one-half cent transaction and use tax. For the previous three years, the City Council has adopted general fund operating budgets that relied on the use of the reserves to cover expenses. Ongoing budget reductions had broadly impacted services throughout the city and were undermining the public health, safety, and welfare of Hillsburg residents. The City Council had determined that without a new guaranteed source of general fund revenue, the city would be forced to drastically cut core services. There, on November 6, 2012, the voters approved Measure V by a vote of 2800 to 2235. The tax was effective April 1, 2013 and automatically terminates 10 years um, after that November 6, 2012 date, unless extended by the voters. The funding priorities um, that the council um, um, took to the voters was public safety, street maintenance, repair, economic development, and the maintenance of city facilities. Again, Measure V is a one-half cent sales tax used to fund vital city services and programs. 100% of the revenue is spent locally for the benefit of Hillsburg residents. Public outreach started on January 19th, went through February 15th, include an online survey, print surveys mailed to all utility customers in English and Spanish with return envelope, and there was a survey article in the Hillsburg Tribune on January 24th. Informational packets was po posted on the city website. A survey link was also on the city website. And then um, 
Social media outreach included multiple posts on Facebook and Nextdoor. Survey results. Online surveys collected 199, print surveys collected 974. The results from the four pro priority items, public safety 19%, streets maintenance 39%, economic development 9%, city facilities 11%. Results in the other categories, Increase general fund reserves and budgets, 6%, community grant program, 3%, and other, 13%. Our overall number of surveys re received um, increased, but I'd like to um, um, give a shout out to our, our PIO. The um, significant increase was in the online, the survey, the survey, um, the electronic surveys that were submitted. And I, I believe that is due to the outreach that was done. So kudos to, to Rhea. A little bit of a comparison between the results from last year and this year. You'll see that the priorities were very similar. 16 in public safety versus 19 in public safety. 41 in streets maintenance versus 39. Six in economic development versus nine, city facilities 12 versus 11. All about the same. Very, very similar to, to um, last year. Next two slides are gonna show survey results versus council allocation. And what I wanna show here is, is this survey is a tool for you. It's a tool for you to um, determine the actual allocation of the Measure V revenue and in years past, we haven't necessarily followed the survey results um, um, as uh, exactly. So, for instance, in 1415, the council stuck to the four priority items as well as 1516. In 1617, you'll see that we did streets 50%, economic development 5, public safety 17.5 and city facility 17.5, and then added the 10% housing. And in 1718, kept it to the four priority categories. Um, Madam Mayor, council members. So last year when we had this discussion, it was really important to council to really focus on streets and roads. So when we came into this meeting, it was um, pretty consistent with the council members and we really wanted to focus on streets and roads. So to kind of re reaffirm what Assistant City Manager Ipoledi was saying is it comes down to what where the need currently is and at, at last year at least um, from Council's perspective there was an additional need almost by 20 percent um, for streets and roads so that's just, just to give, give, you an, give you an example. Here's the allocation of the funds by year in the dollars in the different categories. Okay here we are this year's survey results. Streets, 39%, economic development, 9 public safety, 19 city facilities, 11 community grants, 3 general fund reserves and budget, 6 and other, 13 The total revenue for which we'll all be asking you to allocate is $1,988,755. That is the latest revenue um, projection from HDL our sales tax consultant. Important to note, information pr provided to the public as part of the Measure V ballot measure included funding for public safety, streets maintenance and repair, economic development, and maintenance of city facilities. The surveys indicate approximately 22% or $437,526 to be allocated for something other than what was originally approved by the voters. Okay, now we're gonna get into the projects um, completed since inception and proposed allocation recommendation. So if I could stop, so sorry, um, Madam Mayor, Council Member. So we have the department heads here. If there's questions as we go through this with regards to streets, um, our new public works director is here. He could answer some of those questions as well as they come up. So and this would be an opportunity as questions come up to um, direct them through, through the mayor, of course, to the department heads. Okay. All 
right, let's start with street maintenance and repair. And as the city manager said, um, Director Zimmer is here to answer any questions. Allocation to date, $4,640,645. Projects completed to date include a bike and pedestrian plan, Rivers Bend, some paving projects, South Fitch Mountain Road sidewalk and the City Hall parking lot. Projects in progress, the Dry Creek US 101, as well as the West Plaza parking lot. Funding to be reallocated curb gutter and sidewalks and overlay of the neighborhood streets to a tune of a little over um, 700,000 more to come on the next slide. Proposed allocation, 59% at $1,178,555 plus the 734,200 from projects on hold or, or um, not yet started. Larry has three proposed projects Pavement surfacing project for $812,755. Pavement overlay project for $600,000. And sidewalk repair closure for $500,000. This would probably be a good time to ask Larry any questions if you'd like regarding this before we move on to the next category. Any questions for Director of Public Works? Okay. Vice Mayor? Thank you. Um, can you kind of clarify the difference, um, the pavement surfacing project, pavement overlay project? So do any of those include any of the underground work or is this mainly like we, what we saw last summer? Um, you know, get, maybe talk about the differences between those two. Well, uh, yes, of course. Uh, good evening, everyone. Starting with the map that you're looking at, majority of the roads shown on the map are the carryover from last year, the projects that were on hold. Most of those are intended to be the um, sealing, the preventative maintenance type work, which you're referring to that you saw last year. So it's a continuation of that. Um, the two in the middle, I believe, is college with a little gap in, in between. Um, we have uh, a water main that's been causing a lot of problems historically and so we're hoping to couple this measure V money with the utility money to replace the main and then pave that street so that section would be one that would be at minimum an overlay if not a full reconstruction and um, so of the other numbers we or I should say the rest of the funding beyond what is shown in that map we're in the process of, uh, I'm just starting, creating the CIP budget for the future two years. And so we have not decided specifically what streets there are. Um, the bulk of what we're going to do is going to be more of the preventative maintenance because we just get more bang from the buck as far as uh, preserving our streets into the future. Uh, but we are, are looking to do more of what we are proposing on college, which is uh, leveraging that money so that we are doing the utility work, following that up with the paving so we don't have the trenches in the street. Um, and we know that the utility underground is in good enough shape that we're not going to have to cut into it in the near future. Did that answer your question? Yeah, so um, basically the, the streets that you're highlighted there um, are going to kind of dovetail with what we're going to be looking at when we do the budget process and looking at the um, your improvement request down the road for the next five years, and these are the ones that have already been put up to, all right, this is just a band-aid level, or the, it's all kind of dovetailing with that. Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Yeah, I, if I understand it correctly, so the answer would be not kind of. Um, I think what, what the Public Works Director is looking at, correct me if I'm wrong, is if you look at the red highlighted areas on the map, the focus of that will be the slurry seal, which you've seen in the past, which you've seen on... Powell and um, March Avenue and, and those who are very familiar with that. So I think that is a carryover from what was intended to be done last year. Is that correct? correct? So th that that is that job. As far as the overlay project, the six hundred thousand, that would be that would be a focal point for College Avenue, College Street. Um, the the um, part of the CIP, if I understand correctly, is going to be replacing the water line, but but then using this these funding this funding to take care of the above ground, which would be the, um, the overlay project. Is that correct? 
That that is correct. So this this is really not um, you're not going to see this again probably in the CIP um, or would you? Um, I I assume we would. Okay. Um, and just to be clear, so what you're seeing on there is roughly the 700 some thousand um, that was allocated in the previous year. We have. Uh, a big chunk more that we want to assign streets to it's um it there's a process to go through in deciding what remediation for what streets that we would want to do um, we have software uh, i'm not sure how much history you guys have on this i'd be happy to at some point give a little bit um, individually or at council on uh, the pavement management software and, and what the process is. But we, it generates some streets for us, but it requires going out in the field and looking at them. And then we have to um, compare that against what work we have coming up as far as utilities, because we don't want to have to cut through. Um, the condition of the street is really what drives the treatment. Um, it's not necessarily a Band-Aid. It's the equivalent of painting a house. It's maintaining what you have so it stays in good condition. It doesn't deteriorate. You're adding life to the pavement. So it's, it's not really a Band-Aid. It's not a short term. It's a, it's a maintenance procedure. Um, and it is the best way to get their overall system in its best shape by maintaining what you have first rather than spending far more money in reconstructions um, that will eat up all of your money while your other streets go bad. Okay. Thank you. I also have a question, if I may, please. So you're, you're new to the position, so you're coming in here, and I know you um, probably have looked around at our streets. I was just curious, um, when you look at some of our more well-traveled streets, do you, I mean, like, for example, March Avenue is really well-traveled. At least I hear there's issues still on that street, as well as University being kind of a, a well-traveled street. So are those streets going to get any attention, I mean, obviously soon? Or do you know what I'm talking about? I, I know what you're saying, but mm -hmm. the, the answer I just gave is kind of be the similar answer. We, we go, we, we start with the software, which generates what remediation methods for what streets. But then we go out and we look at the input from council, input from the public, what other things are going on that would conflict with doing that work and how much money we have and we come up with the best method of spending the money now that will prevent uh, further deterioration of the roadway as a system, not the individual street but the whole roadway system, which can save the city far more money in the long run. Thank you. Okay, anyone else have a question? Yes. Yeah, I just, um, I don't know if this is the right time to bring it up, but is it going to be possible for the city perhaps to take a look at uh, doing a little bit of maintenance on the alleys? I understand that the alleys are actually meant to be the um, responsibility of the property owners. This came as a real surprise to me, and I don't think most other people are aware of that either. Um, and they're not being maintained. There's some pretty bad potholes in the alleys. And as we are encouraging uh, ADUs, um, the alleys become more and more the perhaps the only entrance to the person's home. And I think we're going to see more, especially like on the alley between Tucker and Matheson, where the, the lots are very deep, that these are going to be increasingly used almost like streets. So I'm just wondering, could the city do a little bit of pothole repair, a little bit of alley maintenance? Is that something you could fit in? Well, we would cer certainly look at it and see whose responsibility it is, and if it's ours, then um, yes, we will we'll go and... My understanding is that it isn't, that it's actually the property owners, but for example, on my alley, there's a huge pothole, a pothole and I know the property owner is, is a landlord, and I know the property management company d does nothing, so they're certainly not going to fill the pothole. I'm just wondering if that could become a city responsibility. So, um, again, if the direction of council is to do that, then we would definitely take a look at what the, um, impl the, the cost implications okay. would be. Um, again, I'm always concerned, we talked about this briefly, is it, typically it's not just what's above ground, but there's underground utilities that sometimes come with the, those responsibilities. So if it is the will of the council to look at taking more of that on, I'd want to get a, a narrower focus of what that is and then um, work with our public works department and our utility departments to find out what that cost would be long term. Sure. So maybe for now, just take a take a little look at the alleys and get an idea of how big a deal it is. Will Thank do. Thank you. 
Councilman Yokas. Yes, I just have a, qu a quick question about the about where you come up with the number for the uh, sidewalk repair closure, the five hundred thousand. Any is that uh, again? Is that back to the software uh, question? Is that is that how you're estimating the the, the dollar amount there? It, it it has not been fully vetted at this point. Got it. Um, it was just sort of to represent proportional placeholder. Kind um, of. The sidewalk issue is again coming from somewhere else, but I'm sure you're familiar with the trip and fall issues and the, the liability there. It's always great to keep our sidewalks in the best shape we can. Um, and so if there, when issues come up from tree roots or other reasons, particularly in the high traveled areas, it's nice to uh, go through on a regular basis and show that you're maintaining them. Uh, the slash there is, uh, Closures, uh, meaning when there's gaps in the sidewalk, the pedestrian system. Um, I'm not sure how many we have here. Uh, that's also another possibility, although there is sometimes grant funding available for that, whereas the general maintenance, the replacement of uplifted sidewalks is typically, this is the only fund. Gotcha. Thanks. Thank you so much, Director. I think we're good here. Thank you. <laughs> Shall I continue? Thank you. All right, the next category category is economic development. Allocation to date, $782,697. Projects completed include some grant programs, Chamber of Commerce Agreement, the NSCS Cotton's Rent and Stabilization Agreement, um, Low Income Utility Discounts, Latino Outreach and Support Agreement, and then the Inclusionary Housing Set-Aside. Proposed allocation is 11% for 217500 Proposed projects include Chamber of Commerce Agreement for $100,000, the Low Income Utility Discounts, 47500 and the Automated License pl Plate Reader at 70000 And a little note, the rent stabilization is now funded using Measure S funds. Any questions before I move to the next category? Yeah, I want to ask about Measure S. So that's that was a decision to start using Measure S for that. Who made that decision? So Measure S was the set of, was the designed for affordable housing projects and programs, and this falls under that. So similar to the discussion we had with council on including housing as a Measure V question, um, all of the all of the previous housing programs which have fallen within different funds, whether it's a general fund or Measure V funds have been moved over to Measure S. If it's council's decision, desire to move those programs back into the general fund or Measure V funds, of course, that, that is your prerogative. Uh, what we took a look at is um, any, any Measure S type of projects or programs related to affordable housing, we moved into that appropriate funding mechanism because that's we have funding for it now. How much do we have in Measure S? Not prepared to give that okay. answer. Okay, maybe <laughs> and I'm next not going time. to guess. Sure, okay. of course. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, economic development, you've completed that. Yep. So, are there any no other further questions? Okay. Any questions? Okay. okay. I'll move to the next category. Thank you. Thank you. Public safety allocation to date: two million three hundred fifty-one thousand two hundred sixty-four. Projects completed to date, including the funding of three or uh, three positions: police officer, dispatcher, part-time parking control officer, as well as the firefighter down below. Um, police body cameras, police radio replacement set aside, um, Lexa pool, um, some fire equipment replacement, fire department portable radios, a Polaris mobile rims. Um, funding for a vehicle replacement, police station improvements, and fire station improvements. And just a, just a little reminder that the cost of the 2018-19 cost of these three positions is about 293850 And that funding is for public safety positions. And it's, it's important to note that it's, it's assumed that at this point, Measure V will be at least funding those three positions until the end of Measure V. And right now, the three positions total about 293850 Proposed projects 
The option one allocation is about 492,700 or 25 percent. And those pro option one proposed projects include the funding of the three positions mentioned earlier. That's a police officer, dispatcher, and firefighter. Adding additional firefighter or additional funding and then um, putting 100,000 towards the police radio system replacement. And that will actually require um, an additional year of similar funding. So next year we'll be asking for an additional 100,000 for that police radio system. The total is about 100,000. Option two, if the council chose not to um, hire the additional firefighter and fund it with Measure V funds, um, um, fire is um, requesting 100,000 towards equipment, and that includes a paging system, equipment for the new pumper, turnouts and rescue equipment, as well as fun furniture for the training room. Um, these positions um, funded with Measure V will require dedicated Measure V funds until sunset. Um, and if option one is chosen, the ongoing position costs will be a minimum of 392,700. And, and also it's important to keep in mind that that number does increase slightly every year. And if I could add to that, um, Ms. Ipleti. So I asked the chief to, rather than looking at options one and options two, to prioritize them, and I won't speak for Chief Boaz, he can if, if you have questions for him, but the priority for fire was the new position. Um, the discussion was if, if for some reason um, we can't, you know, we're not able to get the position, the second party would be those would be the equipment, but it was clear to the chief, and again, I'll let the chief speak if there's questions, that the first priority was getting three, um, I believe, three firefighters on a on a rig at all times, and that's where that re that recommendation came from him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also want to reiterate what um, um, the city manager said is, you know, these three positions currently are in Measure V, and if they hit the general fund, they will have impacts to the general fund. And if it is council's desire to add this additional position. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this additional position, we will be coming back over the next however many years are left in Measure V, asking that this position be put in Measure V. So um, we're going to if there's going to come a point in time where we're going to have to deal with Measure V and these public safety positions, whether we add this additional position or not, because we currently have three positions sitting in Measure V funding. Um, and if those three positions hit the general fund, we're going to have to assess what those impacts would be. So I just I know. This is the city manager said that. I want to reiterate that, but also options one and options two. Option one is clearly a priority of the fire chief um, over option two. This would be a good time for questions for um, the chiefs if you have them regarding these proposals. Are there any questions for Chief Boaz? Yes. Yes. Uh, my question is actually for Chief Burke. <laughs> Sorry, Chief Boaz. Um, Good evening. Good evening, Chief Burke. Um, on the projects completed to date, there's a part-time parking control officer. Um, that was, uh, I don't see that in the ongoing or proposed projects. And then I was wondering if you could comment on how that relates to the automated license plate reader um, that is in the economic development um, section. So the part-time parking enforcement position has been absorbed into the regular police budget. Um, I don't know if you remember where we added two additional part-time parking enforcement officers as well. So we're up to three and all three of those are in the regular police department budget at this particular time. So the ALPR system would, and there's a reason why it's in the economic development uh, portion versus the public safety part. Parking enforcement really isn't public safety in some cities it's not even in the police department it's it's done by the finance department so here we do it in the police department and that's a good model it's working well but it's clearly more of an economic <laughs> development expense if it was going to go anywhere in measure B that'd be the best place for it because there does seem to be a direct correlation between the efficiency that we conduct parking enforcement and uh, ability of those spaces to turn over and um, revenue coming into our city in terms of more customers for the businesses and that kind of thing. So what it will do is enhance our ability to do parking enforcement by performing more rounds and performing those rounds more efficiently because the system will mark where the vehicle is 
uh, using GPS and won't require, won't require the officer to get out and or lean out of the um, vehicle to mark it with chalk, which is a pretty old school way of doing parking enforcement. And we have had some history of repetitive motion injuries due to that chalking at the police department. So we'll eliminate that and increase the efficiency of the enforcement itself. Thank you. That um, makes a lot of sense. Any other questions? Yes, actually, one more for, you, for uh, Chief uh, Burke. Um, explain the, 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 the radio system. What's, what, why? why so are there's, you, there's two components to that. We have uh, fixed, ra obviously, radio communications are fundamental to our ability to do our work. And we have a fixed radio, the, the one that the dispatchers work on to communicate with the officers in the field, and the handheld radios that the officers carry. So what you're seeing here with this expense, uh, the best way to refer to it would be it's essentially deferred maintenance. Um, we've been, the radios are aged. As an example, the portable radios are 15 years old, um, and they're not no longer supported by the manufacturer. That's when you start getting in, into trouble and where it becomes more urgent to replace them. Probably should have done it, but the, the best time, the, the ideal time to do it would have been in the middle of the recession, and so we've been kind of putting it off um, for a while, and now I think we're getting to this critical point where it needs to be addressed. Both the fixed system and the portable systems are both so aged that... Um, we're going to have difficulty getting them repaired and even getting parts for those if we don't uh, address it now. And how, how, how does this, um, well, you know what, that's, that's good enough. Thanks. Thank you. Councilwoman Gold? Well, actually, my question is for Chief Boaz. Yeah, just um, I'm wondering um, why a, an additional firefighter is needed now at this particular time as opposed to any previous time? Thank you, Council Member Gold, the rest of the council. Be glad to answer that question. Is there any other questions you may have? Um, I personally think it's been needed for a long time. We're, cat we're trying to catch up to where we should be. Um, but my, my answer is going to be in a few parts. One, adding one additional firefighter will guarantee that the city of Hillsburg has three firefighters on an engine 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the first time in the history of the city. And um, I think that's important. And part of the reason I think that's important is because, and as you'll see in our present, my presentation to council, our call volume this year, again, has, has gone up quite a bit. In uh, 2017, we responded to 1,834 calls for service, just to give you an idea, and I'll show you this in my presentation to council on March 5th. 2016, that number was 1,546. In 2015, that number was 1,379. And in 2014, it was 1,306. So that's over 500 calls a year more that we're receiving, and um, I don't see that trend lessening in the future. Um, the number of calls that we take, 1,800 calls a year does a few things. One, it has an effect on our crews physically and mentally um, because that's just a lot of calls to respond to and a lot of emergencies to deal with. I think um, secondarily, um, what that does is it translates to less time during the day and the evening for our crews and the people working at the station to actually work on other staff assignments, which all of them have, and uh, I find that, you know, be partly because of the call volume, we're, we are falling behind on a lot of staff, just regular staff projects. Adding an additional person would help distribute that workload a little bit more. Um, from a risk management standpoint, I think we, the NFPA standard 1910 for, for response would be four people on an engine. I think kind of the industry practice is three, and uh, former councils have uh, made it clear that that was their desire to have three people on the engine. We've been reaching that by uh, utilizing our rather robust reserve program, which I'll talk about in a second, but um, there have been times recently where, and quite a few times, where we're just not able to fill that third position with the reserve firefighter for one reason or another, and that that leaves us in a spot where we have two people on an engine responding to emergencies. And, um, you know, a current example of that would be the fire at Kinsmoke uh, a few weeks ago. We, the first in-engine company on that had two people on it. 
And that's just not an effective response for a city this size. And, and from a risk management standpoint, it, it, uh, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. Um, we have a very robust reserve program, and I don't want to you know, undermine our reserve program at all because they do a fantastic job and have done over the last couple decades filling in all the gaps that we have. And I, I anticipate that they'll continue to, to still do that. But uh, it's, be, it's becoming harder and harder to find trained and committed reserves. We lose a lot of people to Cal Fire over the fire season, and um, it's just not consistent enough for me. And lastly, if the firestorms proved one thing to me, um, it's that we have a very thin margin staffing-wise at the fire department. Now, we, I thought our response was very professional. We were able to mount a fantastic response both to the fires and in staffing our station and, and making sure our city was safe. And a lot of that had to do with um, our reserves. But it, it really got me to thinking all of our staff was healthy during those times. We had nobody off on injury or illness. And if we did, it that one one person down right now would have a significant effect on our staffing, our overtime, our burnout, all that. Um, and just adding that third person, just it would take the two firefighters we have working during the day and put them on shift along with the third. So we'd have a real cons um, kind of continuity and consistency in our crews. And this is a long answer, and I'm giving you a lot of information, but um, – I just think that that margin is something that concerns me. I'm really worried that we should something happen to to one of our people or two of our people. God forbid, we we just won't have the people to do it, and uh, nor the overtime budget. So, those are a few of the reasons I could keep going and going, but I hope that answers your question for now. Uh, I'd be glad to provide more detail if you'd like. But um, just a few more questions. Yeah, um, Councilman McCaffrey, please. Uh, thanks, Chief Chief Boaz. Um, I just want to commend you for the fantastic reserve program and the fantastic department that you uh, run. I was wondering if having that third firefighter would help strengthen the reserve program further than what it is now. The question is, would it help strengthen the reserve program? Um, yeah, I, I think it would for um, a couple of reasons. One, um, you know, a lot of the reserves we have are going to school and training to become professional firefighters. And, you know, showing them that their hard work can pay off, by, you know, hiring one of our own or having the opportunity for them to test for a position in our department, I think it motivates them. It wants them to be around more. Also, like I, I don't anticipate adding one position to the engine will uh, impact our reserve program at all. Uh, what I'm anticipating is that, you know, with continued vigilance, we will be able to, um, a lot of times, have four people on the engine. And that's what the NFPA standard is. And that is really the amount of people you need on a first in engine company to really get some work done in the first few minutes of a fire. So I think that increasing staffing will, um, you know, it'll provide them a level of confidence and safety training and, um, and motivate them to be around more, actually. Councilman Yokus. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, uh, a few questions, Chief. Um, first of all, I think I've, we've, I've asked you this before about the insurance impacts, the impacts of, of how of our rating, uh, of our ability to, of the insurance companies to, to evaluate our <coughs> ability to protect property in town. How does, does this, do you know how this, how this impacts that rating? Sure. Well, you're referring to an ISO rating? Yeah. Okay, ours is currently a two. So when they do a review of the ISO, there's a number of things that are, number of factors that they look at. Staffing is certainly one of them, um, minimum daily staffing, and how, how much or how often the department's reading, reaching some national standards for the amount of people that we can get to an incident um, in a certain amount of time. So staffing does play into it, and of course adding additional staffing will um, kind of fortify our rating, I think, because it will be an increase from where we are now. Um, another question would be, um, how does our, how would this uh, additional um, firefighter impact our ability? Well, I'm thinking about how we work with partner districts, you know, uh, Dry Creek, um, all the various other districts that we actually partner with. 
how would this, um, are there, and I also understand that the, the, the county is looking at reorganizing how they, how those districts are operating and funded. Um, is there any way that, do you foresee any sort of impact on, on in, the, from the, in the future of how those participations might change and with our financially? With, that's a, that's a complicated question. There's so many unknowns about what's going on in the county right now. I think for us as the city of Hillsburg, there's, there could be a lot of opportunity for shared services and, and maybe even revenue, but we're, they're just, right. it's too early in the process to really say that what, what that'll be. I would anticipate that we continue to maintain our contracts for response to the Sodiomi Dry Creek area as well as Fitch Mountain, of course. Um, as far as reciprocal response, most of the mutual aid engines that we get in response to our fires, is, well, they come from, you know, Windsor, Rincon Valley, Santa Rosa, uh, Forestville. They all have three people on the engine. So by putting, guaranteeing three people on the engine, we're certainly um, ensuring that we're providing a more reciprocal response to them. Okay. And then finally... Does that uh, answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Well, I think to your point... There's a lot of unknowns at the county level right now, right? So there are a lot of unknowns, and how and when the city of Hillsburg plays into it, that's it's unknown at this point. I, I speak with the city manager about it a lot. So if, if I can add to that, I think I think the city actually is in a pretty good place with regards to the county because we have the contracts in place for Sodiomi and Fitch, which really, I mean, if there's a, if if we didn't have this contract in place, we would be the ones responding regardless because we're the closest. But having that arrangement with them, and I know the chief will be working with the county to strengthen those arrangements, agreements here this next year coming up. But the, as your point, the county is um, has, has a lot to sort out with regards to fire safety. Um, to, to reiterate what the chief said, we're in a pretty good spot here. We have a great department, good chief, and we have good relationships with our, with our neighbors. So um, whatever's happening in the county, they have to work that out. But we are currently in a really good space. And, we'll, and we'll, we will participate in those conversations, obviously, and bring council along as, as things come up. Okay, fine. The, the, my last question would be uh, regarding the tasks that, that aren't getting done. Um, so, in other words, the, the impact of not having this extra person means that there are tasks that aren't, that, you know, non, you know, call tasks that aren't. What, can you give, explain? Uh, sure. I can give you some examples, yeah. maybe not all of them. but So, each staff member on our department has at least one primary staff assignment and a few that are un, underneath that. Uh, for the captains, those are more, probably more administrative Managerial, like uh, Captain Gerald Williams is our training officer. So that takes a tremendous amount of his time. Um, we have a person that's in charge of personal protective equipment for the entire department, all the reserves. That's a time-consuming project. Um, somebody's in charge of uh, EMS. Uh, uh, basically keeping up with best practices in EMS and keeping all of our EMS supplies stocked. We have uh, one of the staff assignments is equipment, which actually more bleeds over it into at least two staff assignments because it's a lot of work. Maintaining and uh, repairing our equipment. Uh, we have people whose staff assignments include annual ladder testing, annual SCBA testing, uh, rescue. Does that give you an idea? Yeah. Some of them? That's yeah. Thanks. Off the top of my head, I mean, I... That's not a comprehensive list, but everybody does have things that they're focused in on, and it just the more we can spread that out, the better. Right. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I Thank just you, uh, Councilwoman Gold. Yeah, I just wonder if um, you could uh, maybe shed any light of, on why there's a significant increase in the number of calls. I, I assume they're mostly medical calls. That is a very good question, and. I am going to be providing you some more detail on that in my update to council on March 5th. Um, but the, and I'll show you what calls were increased and what percentages. Um, but what I'm seeing in the data is that our increase in calls is across the board. It's not any one type of call. We're going to more fires. We're going to more medical aids. We're going to more public service calls. Um, and the, the increases are fairly standard across the board. So. I, I would have just attributed it to how much busier this town is, how much more is going on with you know development and people and tourism. Um, it's just a lot busier now. Hopping. Huh? I'll try to provide you a better <laughs> answer on March fifth with some data to back it up, but um, it's just. I think part of it too with with cellular technology. I think people are a lot more likely to call nine one one for help. Um, so. That could be part of it as well. 
Thank you. I, I too had that question, so I'm glad it's raised about how would you characterize the changes and the increases? Because it's valuable to us to know that as we talk about the city and how it's changed and why it's changing and why it demands more public safety. And, and so I really am eager to hear more about that for March 5th. I also wanted to know how many full-time firefighters do we have in the city? Okay, that's, that's a good question. We have three, right now we have three captains, three engineers, and two firefighters, okay. or eight. Uh, but we also have myself, right. Chief Collister, Ruben, who's, a, who's also a firefighter. Uh, but on shift, um, eight. So this would make it nine. This would even it out to three per day per engine company. Okay, and as far as um, for the March 5th, may I ask you to provide where the people live? I mean, these firefighters, how what the proximity is to our city. You don't have to answer it now, but I'm just curious how many are living where they're living. Um, I, you know, like how many are living in Lake County? I heard that we had a couple that were living in Lake County. I don't know if that's happening anymore. No, none of them are living okay. in Lake County. So I was um, just curious. You don't have to give it now, yeah, but that's something I'm curious we about. We do have a, a number of them that live right here in town or, or close by in Windsor. Perhaps on, yeah, perhaps on March 5th, you could maybe tell us. Just I'm just curious how close we, we are to our So I think we could probably provide a, some type of GIS map I'd have to spend you don't have to time. give addresses of course I'm just curious at you the want proximity to, uh, if they're able to live in their town to see it on a map okay. just have me tell you three live in Windsor four live in Hillsburg whatever okay. you want so they're all within 20 miles pretty much yeah I'll have to okay I mean, thank you March okay. 5th I, I look forward to your report data, so okay. I could probably thank sit here and do it off the top of my head but I want to make sure it's correct so thank you so much You're thank welcome. you for your report and thanks for answering questions is any anyone else okay thank you chief thank you the next category is city facilities. Allocation to date, $1,653,537. Projects completed to, the, to date include the Interactive Resources Building Assessment, CDC Conceptual Design, the Corporation Yard HVAC Improvement, the Villa Annex Restroom Upgrade, and then miscellaneous facility improvements occurring at the Community Center, the Senior Center, and the Public Works Op Building, as well as um, funding towards the City Hall security and access. Um, projects in progress, the City Hall renovations. Proposed project, this, um, a security and keyless access system to cover um, four facilities at the tune of a 100,000, um, which is um, 5%. Just a pretty picture of the allocation to date. Pretty close to 50% with streets. And again, in summary, um, before you is the proposed staff's request, um, as well as comparing it to the survey results. Recommendation before you is to receive the report of the fiscal 17-18 Measure V revenues, projects, expenditures to date, receive results of the survey, consider input on how the Measure V funds should be allocated, and now provide direction to staff for budget allocation. That concludes staff's report. Thank you so much. Are Thank there you. any questions before we open to public comment? Yes, okay. Just one more about that. We kind of raised over the, the, the facilities question. <laughs> what would be the impact if we didn't do the security system? Um, we will continue as is. Right now, we have a lot of keys out there, and our goal is to make this um, a city with key, a keyless facility city and to improve the security of our facilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, have, we have a lot of um, um, supplies, materials in different buildings, and what this would allow us to do is, first of all, track who's coming in and coming out of those buildings, but also have a much more secure, um, much more secure building. If you know, average of twenty five thousand dollars per building um, allows us to um, have, you know, it's a tolerance level from from, from risk and allows us to, to lower that tolerance, frankly, um, and have a more secure facility. Okay, thank you. Any other questions before we open to public comment? Okay, thank you, thank you so much. So it is time now to open to public comment. So we're looking for people from the public that would like to make um, any kind of comment regarding the Measure V allocations and council's decision tonight in terms of where we're going to spend this money. So does anyone like to come to the podium? You have about three minutes. So 
I invite you up. Yes, please. Thank you, Gina. Welcome. Can you hear me? Okay. Good evening. Um, my name is Gina Reiner. I'm the executive director of Healdsburg Jazz. And um, I would like to uh, make a proposal that you consider an allocation for the Healdsburg Jazz uh, Festival, uh, our uh, iconic and historic event coming up uh, June 1st through June 10th, the 20th anniversary. And uh, I'd like to consider, uh, to ask you to consider that you do it under the economic development allocation. Um, just um, a little background about Healdsburg Jazz Fest. Jessica Felix started it 20 years ago, and it's uh, now a very large um, nonprofit arts organization in Healdsburg and a very large, uh, important strategic cultural asset. And we uh, mostly get our funding from uh, individual donors and grants, but that's not enough. So we uh, also apply to other areas, and we feel that um, the Measure V allocation would be appropriate. Uh, so just to give you a few, uh, a few areas where we believe that we contribute to economic development in the city of Healdsburg, half of the festival attendees come from outside the area, uh, they stay in Healdsburg hotels, they eat at our restaurants, um, they visit the downtown area, they shop, they go to the wine tasting rooms. Uh, we uh, probably have spent about a uh, million dollars in advertising the festival over the last 20 years, and in turn we're advertising Healdsburg. So we're bringing uh, visitors to this area, and I'd like to say at this point, we're bringing visitors that are interested in the arts and that appreciate uh, the food and wine culture and the art culture. And I think it's important to note also that it's a diversity from wine and food bringing the arts. Um, our concert goers are typically affluent and educated. Uh, we think that by uh, their visits, especially this year, it will aid in uh, faster economic uh, recovery and revitalization to the city of Healdsburg post the October 2017 uh, fires. We also hire local vendors, which contributes to economic development uh, and independent contractors throughout the year to help with producing the festival. We also have a robust year-round uh, education program. Uh, we've probably served in 20 years uh, 16,500 students. Um, and I think that Measure V would be the right funding vehicle to su support the Healdsburg Jazz Organization in a sustainable way. And I respectfully ask that you consider this for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gina. Thanks. Do you have any questions? I don't know. Is that appropriate to ask questions? Yeah. Okay. okay. So we will. Thank you. All right. Muted it. So anyone have a question about anything regarding this? No? Okay. Well, thank you so much. Right, thank Very you. articulate, easy to follow there. Thank you. Okay. So um, any other public comments regarding Measure V spending or giving council direction for any other projects or ideas? Thank you. Welcome. Hello. I'm Jessica Felix, and I just got a nice introduction from Gina Reiner, who I can't tell you how happy I am for the first time ever to have an executive director. So um, it's something that we added to our budget this year. Before I talk about the festival, I, I actually have some questions that I um, that arose as I obviously, obviously I'm not really that familiar with what economic development is. So the first question actually is, what is the 13% other for? I mean, I know a lot of us wrote in things, so um, how is that going to be determined? After you ask that, he, she's going to, or 
you'll record that and then we'll maybe answer those questions so what if i would we suggest want. is we take all public comment and if there's any questions that, that when public comment is completed we'll be able to answer the appropriate okay, questions i'm going to ask the same question so okay we'll get answered. well i i mean i have some other things to say, but the, the questions that arose well because i'm not actually sure what economic development is um because i'm looking at what you fund and i'm trying to understand what economic development means because that's what we thought we're helping with the economy but I don't understand how low income utility discounts and and some I mean how they develop the economy that's how they I, I understand that they're very important things to fund but I just I'm just trying to understand I'm not complaining I'm actually just trying to understand mm -hmm. why an automated license plate reader is it's going to generate income by giving tickets more tickets I mean is it, maybe it's just not all about income that's what I'm confused on. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that economic development is to help the economy and the community. So if that's a question that can't be answered in this, then we can maybe talk about it sometime. But these are things that I'm a little confused on. But anyway, I do uh, just want to reiterate everything that Gina said. I want, you know, um, we, f from what we feel that we do fit into that category, we are the largest. Uh, uh, nonprofit um, organization in Hillsburg. Our budget this year is going to be six hundred thousand, which is two hundred thousand dollars more than last year. We're added an executive director. We've extended our um, advertising budget, more uh, costs for artists, more costs for airfares, more costs for hotels, which actually I'm having trouble finding rooms for my musicians. Um, so I'm hoping some of these hotels are going to open soon. Um, but I just I believe that we've given a great gift to this community and you all know me even new or old I mean I'm, I'm always looking for avenues it, you can't take it I mean a lot of people think that it we just find money it's just there it's easy for us but it's not it's hard and I've been doing it myself pretty much and I'm tired and I'm really happy that I have help and we want to sustain the festival. We want to see it grow. We want to see it continue in Healdsburg. And to do that, I'm going to need staff, and I'm going to need help. And we're going to we want to we want to go for another 20 years with or without me. It has to be sustainable. And I think this uh, grant will help um, get us over, uh, get us going in that direction. Uh, once we build uh, um, executive director's position and other positions, they can help raise more income. But right now, we have to add those positions. So. Um, please consider us. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Thank you. Welcome, Mark. Uh, Mark Decker, Healdsburg. I uh, just had a quick question in regards to um, the projections uh, that were made this year. Uh, how has the, la the prior year's projections uh, kind of gone through? Is, is it, has it exceeded it? And what happens to the funds? If they have been in excess of the um, of the allocated amounts uh, from prior years, do they carry forward? Do they do they get uh, uh, they get uh, held in reserve? Uh, and what happens to the funds uh, on this budget if, in fact, it does exceed uh, the amounts? Does it get allocated out uh, a pro rata there to each each particular fund, or are they held? Or what's the status on that? So I'd like to kind of get an idea about that. Thank you. And again, city manager, is it appropriate then to answer these questions in a minute after the public comment? Thank you. All right. Anyone else like to ask, uh, excuse me, like to pose a, a comment, a question regarding Measure V? Thank you. Welcome. Rosie Fabian, Sherman Street. Madam Mayor, Council Members, City Staff, thank you very much for your presentation. It's uh, quite comprehensive. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of public safety. It's obvious that the community is very concerned about having that funded. Um, they don't necessarily know exactly what is necessary, and uh, our police chief and our fire chief do know those things. So I trust that that 25% is what is fair for the um, public safety to receive. And, of course, the streets are always important. That's a big part of... Um, some of the things that people are upset about. Um, and many people are happy about the way the streets are being taken care of. So I just wanted to go ahead and um, put a thumbs up for the public safety. I think this is a very fair 
um, assessment of, of everything. I, I like the numbers that I'm seeing here and that you're giving money, more money to pretty much everything that you've asked for and that the city is being very um, reasonable with what they need with their $100,000. And I think that's a great, um, you know, you have to update your security. That's important. So thank you all so much. And uh, thank you um, for everybody over here at this table who works so hard all the time. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Okay, I'm going to be closing public comment here. Last time, last call. All right. So um, I think I just can close public comment and do that. Council is now going to hear some answers to the questions and public as well, please. So do I'll let uh, the city manager lady start and what she doesn't get, I'll clean up. Okay. Um, I'm at least going to um, tackle Mark's question. That's a really good question. HDL's projections are fairly close. So there is, but there is some excess funds sitting in that Mark had talked about or Mark had thought as a possibility. What I'm using those funds as, they stay in reserve, they stay in the Measure V fund, but they're there at least for now because it's not that much. There's maybe 60,000 at the very most. I want it there so at the point when, when let's say HDL's project projections come in high, yet we've allocated that number already and people and committed to those funds, I want a little bit of a buffer. So for right now, it, it's, it's staff's preference to leave those funds in the Measure V fund. It's not being transferred or allocated, that's up to council, but it's, it's sitting in the reserves for when Maybe those HDL projections are a little high. And I'm going to let Mr. McKellian answer the other two questions. So the question was, what is economic development? Um, and I believe uh, the flyer, the yellow flyer that was mailed out, it's defined as funding for economic development programs can be used for the following purposes, developing and implementing incentives to retain and recruit businesses to Healdsburg, infrastructure improvements to support business retention and development, and or supporting the Healdsburg Chamber of Commerce. Uh, two years ago, we also um, provided some housing incentives in there as well. I think that was actually a question that was on the on the um, on the actual flyer. And so from there, we funded some of those pro programs, which was the um, COTS and um, Reach for Home project. And we also were looking for an area to land the um, utility discounts, um, which made sense because from a housing perspective, we want to be able to keep those folks housed and providing those discounts in the low income housing. They're in they in turn are actually working in our community, so we, there was a linkage there as well. As far as the um, the um, ALP program, I think that's what the acronym is. The idea was the more vehicles we can actually turn over, there's more people actually shopping in our community, so they're not taking those spaces up for a longer period of time. So when there's an open space, the idea is somebody will come in there and take that, and they'll be walking around purchasing in our in our lo local areas as well. So that's that's where the connection is for that. I believe those were the two questions. Oh, and the other, the question was, what were some of the other? Um, and talking to um, Rhea, who collected all these survey results, the, the response was the, the majority of the other comments, and again, if you, if you look at the, the flyer, there's actually an area you can write in what other was, and so there's some kind of a mixed bag, but my understanding is the majority of those were for housing and for parking. Housing and parking is my understanding. And the, the balance of those... Um, there were some for park maintenance, some for um, homelessness. There was some for facilities and things like that. But the majority, I believe, of the two were for um, housing and parking. Okay, thank you. I think that's what I was wondering about that 13%, because as you probably remember, I didn't want to take housing off of the Measure V survey. So I'm just curious how many people are still writing in housing. So I'm just wondering about that. So thanks for asking about the 13%. It is a tool. I know it's not scientific, but it's. I like it when people take their pen and write words instead of just numbers and actually validate their values. So, cool. All right. Um, so at this point, we're up to a conversation here as a council to decide how we want to allocate. And I'm open for anyone starting here. Anybody want to begin? Uh, Councilman McCaffrey. Yeah, I want to um, thank staff for uh, their choices. I think they, they make a lot of sense. Some of the some of the ones I'd like to talk about specifically is um, uh, the the firefighter position. I'm in support of that. I think uh, that having 
um, three firefighters on an engine makes a lot of sense. And uh, I'm just really proud of our department and um, the, think that um, having that fully staffed um, department is an important thing. And I, and I really like the how the reserve program has gone too. It, it creates a nice pool to to find folks to, to fill that position. And I know that um, if this does go through, that we will have someone um, very well qualified for that position and already familiar with our department and um, the surroundings. Um, the, I, I really like the automated license, license plate reader. It probably comes as no surprise to everybody. That's something I've been talking about for a long time. I think that uh, bang for your buck um, when we're talking about parking with our parking consultants um, and if you if you kind of roll all that into one I think that that technology will really help us make a difference in in parking which I think is a source of a lot of woes for um, people in town both businesses residents and visitors and so I think that uh, having that technology will make a uh, a level playing field and will kind of reveal um, the source of you know why why we have these parking issues and it will generate some data to be able to uh, be analyzed and, and look at that um, situation a little bit deeper um, for in the future if we want to make other decisions about paid parking um, other lots and spending even more money on something like that um, so I think that that's a great thing um, as far as I'd like to, I'd like to go into the economic development as well. Um, I think from uh, Ms. Felix's question, you know, economic development is kind of a broad brush, and I think that um, you can look at a lot of things um, as economic development. In the survey, um, I think we we talked about it in kind of the pure sense of of creating. You know, retaining businesses, creating new businesses, and I think that the chamber, uh, if you look at the um, what the chamber has done and does for us, I think that that's very valuable, and I support um, the allocation for the chamber of commerce. I think that's really important, especially now that um, you know we have some projects that are creating some some friction downtown, and I think that the chamber has been doing a good job of of holding meetings and kind of working with those businesses to the best uh, that they can. Um, but that's another thing that I'd like to talk about at a later date, maybe at the, the gold session, um, some more details on that specifically. But I do support the chamber. And um, I also think that um, what uh, Ms. Reiner and Ms. Uh, Felix were talking about uh, with the Jazz Festival, I think that that is an institution that we want to keep here in town. And I think that it is our best interest to make sure that that organization uh, has some longevity, and I support a grant to that organization as well. I think that um, in years past, I have worked as a volunteer in the Jazz Festival, uh, full disclosure, and I enjoy um, the community that is that is around it. And I think that it's it's more than it's more than just a festival. It's a it's a community that has become part of Healdsburg and something that um, a lot of people, I think, equate to Healdsburg. And I think I've heard the council talk about funding the arts, and you know we talk about a lot about you know sculpture, some of the events that we've done in the near. Um, in the near past, um, Art After Dark with the arts, um, the, the uh, Healdsburg Center for the Arts partnering with them, the, um, the events that we do for Dia de los Muertos, I think it's, it's, showing, it's showing me that there is something out there that is beyond wine and food. And I think that um, us supporting the arts is uh, something that we should be interested in from an economic development standpoint to diversify our economy, which I think is, is important. And I see that supporting the Jazz Festival and other organizations such as um, uh, 
uh, like similar to the jazz festival organization uh, would be in our best interest and going forward and this is something I'd like to bring up at the goal session uh, is to talk about some kind of an art advisory group I won't go into it um, but something to where in the future that group can advise us on how to allocate funds that we would like to um, use as economic development tool for the arts. So um, I think, and I would say that since I would like to add the grant money for the Jazz Festival, that would come out of the streets uh, program and everything else that was asked for by staff in that respect. Um, would be as it was reported. Thank you. Council on goal. If I could just, I didn't hear an actual number. I've heard the number of 25,000 from my notes. Is, is that the number 25,000? Okay, thank you. Well, I, I want to commend the staff on coming up with a budget allocation, which I think very closely mirrors what the voters' intention was when they passed Measure V. I know there's other issues that are extremely important. Um, certainly, affordable housing is. Um, very uh, prime and a lot of people's um, priorities and I hope that we can find a, a, a more robust mechanism than Measure S to go forward and have more funds for affordable housing. I don't think it's going to come out of Measure V um, and like I said I think that the allocation that you've that you've come up with is good. Um, as much as I support the Healdsburg Jazz Festival, I think it's a great organization. I think it's a bit of a stretch and probably not really in the what the voters were thinking of when they, they this was basically like an emergency measure, Measure V, when we were doing you know poorly financially and the voters are really thinking about maintaining essential services. So I, I just think that there's more appropriate um, uh, funding mechanisms for um, supporting the arts, which I, I certainly support. But that maybe Measure V is is not uh, is not that, and that maybe we don't want to open the door to a lot more organizations coming forward with proposals for these funds in the future. So that's my point of view on that. Let me get clarity. So as far as the position goes for the fire, are you prepared to? Yes. Well, probably like um, the ch the chief put a, put forth a great case for needing another firefighter, and I think we all want to have our fire department adequately staffed. Um, I'm, of course, I do have some anxiety about using Measure V funds for staff positions because they, they have an endpoint, and then what do you do? So I've thought about that, and I'm not totally comfortable with it, but I also feel like it's appropriate to take care of our needs today, and um, we're not really sure what our, our needs and what our, fi our financial situation will be in, what is it, four or five years when these, when these funds expire. So um, I, I'm okay with going ahead with funding the position. You've, you know, obviously we understand that there may be a shakedown in five years if if these funds are not replaced in some way. Thank you, Councilman Yokis. Sure. Um, well, I'll, I'll I'll continue that train of thought about the, the safety. I, I too uh, uh, am supportive of Chief's request for option one, but I also share the concern about the about the about funding positions with with. Um, with Measure B, uh, I, I wonder whether we could start talking about ways we can, uh, and maybe this, I think this will probably come up in our budget discussions, but um, swapping swapping projects from the budget, from the general fund, with positions in the in the Measure B. So in other words, Measure B would then more, would be focused on, on funding projects, whereas uh, the general fund would, would, would actually hold those positions. So that, that way, if we have some uh, odd, you know, if we, if we were, we don't have enough money for a full position, you know, if we're not faced with axing a whole position, we can just maybe narrow down the scope of a project or, or, or eliminate a project or two, but, still, but keep those, those, those positions. So that, that was my thought about, about how to address that. But, you know, that's a, I think that's a bigger budget discussion. So in the meantime, I'm, I'm happy with supporting the, 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 the chief's uh, recommendation. Um, and um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, as far as economic development, um, you know, I, I, I see your point, uh, Councilman Regold, about the about the, uh, the stretch of, uh, of the Hillsborough Jazz Fest. But I also see the the, the point of, of Mr. of uh, Councilman McCaffrey's point about the Jazz Fest being and arts in general being a real big uh, driver of economic, uh, you know, um, 
activity um, from a lot of different, from a, a real wide variety of, of, of economic activity, right? I would I would like to see I would be okay with with supporting the the, the jazz fest request as as a kind of a precursor um, to an arts fund. So in other words, let's let's start focusing on um, instead of sp supporting specific you know jazz fest or or art after darks or whatever, have an actual uh, regular support of of an overall or arts organization that kind of like what we do for the chamber. Um, but that with that that arts organization would be charged with taking the money that we give them and doling it out to uh, other arts projects as that organization sees fit. So, I, so in other words, I'm, I'm in support of the of the twenty five thousand. But I think next time around, I'd like to see some and, and we'll again with goals. I like to talk about how we can work that into a bigger, a more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, robust way of, of supporting <laughs> arts versus than just a one-off here and there. So that's my position on the on the Jazz Fest request. Um, you know, I would also like to see some kind of. I, I like the idea of, of having some sort of a, like a, a a venture, almost like a venture capital or social entrepreneur fund that that, that we could actually use to say. To, uh, let's say there's a let's say someone would, would like to have some sort of an a, a, an event, um, like the Jazz Fest, but more of a I don't know, like an ag tech event, an ag tech conference here in Healdsburg. It's, it's it's maybe a little bit of, a, of, a, of an outlier idea, but it could have argue, arguably a lot of, of, of uh, benefit to us, right, to the, to the city. Um, it would be nice to, I would like to think about how we can incorporate down the, down the road some way that we could have that kind of, as part of, have a, a that, that venture capital, venture capital fund um, as a way to channel these Measure B economic development funds. Um, again, I'm I'm thinking for the future. Let's, so you you would could probably consider then the destination development f uh, grant program that we're just beginning. That would be um, a source of funds for somebody had an, a new idea of you know some new program, some new event. <laughs> they could apply for that funding. You mean with the HJD? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's that's one way of looking at it. I, that's maybe that's a bad example because uh, it does in, incorporate you know. Travel, but there might be some other sort of uh, investment that might be that would uh, could be useful to the city from a long term perspective that a, a um, you know a, a business person might uh, look to getting some sort of social entrepreneur kind of investment from. And then the and the arts fund that you're contemplating is that a Measure V idea or is it some separate fund completely? No, that, so that, the idea there would be uh, a, a, an aspect of measure, so just just like we we have a fixed. Kind of uh, uh, investment in the, in the in the chamber every year for a hundred thousand um, dollars. Maybe we can consider down the road a fixed investment in an arts kind of umbrella organization for a certain dollar amount every year as part of economic development from the Measure V funds. That's my that's my thought. Um, um, as far as the, another idea for economic development, I know that we've we've been talking about a lot a lot about the uh, the impact of, of the roundabout on local on the on the, the downtown businesses. Um, I I'd be curious to hear what you. I know that that there are all kinds of you know hairy legal questions about the um, the claims that we may or may not receive as far as the the, the overage of the of the contract with with um, uh, Bay Cities. Um, but I wonder if you'd be open to asking staff to come up with some sort of a, a program, uh, and staff maybe you can chime in. So we're actually going to have a closed session um, discussion on this on the fifth. We can table that discussion until we have that. Would be that way we're not delving into any legal okay. challenges. Great, thanks. But that's one of the thoughts that I have about kind of coming to all. Um, um, the uh, license plate reader, I think, is I'm I'm super uh, behind that. I think it, it's only smart that we would have that we would invest in the technologies that would allow us to, you know, manage our our infrastructure more smartly, right? Um, I I, I kind of think of that as as as, as almost like a, a street. So if, we, if we had if we were investing in parking, if we had parking under the, the streets column last last time around, uh, to me, managing parking. Uh, is kind of part of that street, streets uh, uh, component as well. So if we're talking about rejiggering numbers, um, maybe it's a, it's half the streets, half to economic development for that seventy thousand. But either way, I think it's a huge. I think it's really smart, um, and I'm very much very much in support of that. Um, and then finally, um, 
um, streets. So I'm looking at the I'm looking at the uh, uh, the, the five hundred thousand for the sidewalks. So to me, that that that's 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 a another way of saying let's invest in ways that are non-automotive to get around town, right? So what I'd like to do is carve out a certain amount of money, um, a good chunk of money um, that that could be used um, that that we'll have to kind of reserve um, to be uh, investigated as a source as a source of funding for supporting alternative non-auto transportation that would be decided through a mechanism of a work session roundtable of various parties involved with transportation issues around the city. So, we, for instance, um, I know that the that the senior the senior citi senior citizens advisory committee has been talking about uh, developing. A, 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 you know, a walking program, a, 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 a safe walking pass program. Um, they've been talking about uh, doing a shared um, transportation program. Um, there's been talk about some sort of uh, a voucher system or, or, or and I even, even heard some, some other tangential uh, uh, interest in subsidizing like a lift kind of a, 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 a program, right? Is there some sort of a shuttle that we can work with with the downtown merchants to connect to SMART? Um, so these are all kind of ideas that if we had some funding, some chunk of money set aside, we can go to the stakeholders in the town and say, okay, we, we're serious about, about looking at different ways of, 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 getting, of, of addressing that non-automotive transportation. Um, but I don't know what those answers are yet, and I don't think we have those answers, so that's why I'm proposing let's carve out a chunk of money um, and um, it's to be, to be uh, you know, used at a, at a certain down, I mean, to be allocated as we decide based on that input from the, from the stakeholders. And so that, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Okay. Vice Mayor Hay. Um, just a, a couple thoughts. The, the way I look at this is I want to respect the, um, the vote for Measure V and what this was for. And when I look at this, and I, I do appreciate the staff's recommendation on how much is going to streets, I look at this kind of as a difference between capital improvements and operating expenses. Um, and I like that we're front loading everything with a big chunk towards streets because you spend that money now, that lasts quite a long time. Um, the public safety, some of these other things are operating expenses and I think we need to approach this like Measure V may not get renewed. I think as a council we have a responsibility not to consider this, oh it's free money, it's gonna continue forever. We've got two budget cycles uh, that we have to address some of these and it's it's I mean it's a lot of money but in the grand scheme when you're looking at the you know the two million dollars that's that's out there right now 1.1 is going towards streets that's just for this next year is what they're proposing I mean that million dollars is going into the streets and infrastructure that'll last many years beyond if this doesn't happen um, so I think it is important for us to look during the budget you know the session that we have coming up to start, you know, looking at the public safety and some of these costs and, you know, like you were saying, shifting them, getting ready to shift. And then if Measure V gets renewed, I mean, man, if we've already figured out the the budget to uh, accommodate the public safety levels that we need and have Measure V just for streets, I mean, think, imagine the, the streets number up at, you know, 75%. You know, I mean, what, what could we do here? to really improve the infrastructure. So I, I really look at this as capital improvements versus operating expenses. Um, the other thing is, the nice thing with the streets is it's improvements you can see right away. Um, so I like this proposal. Uh, I do support option one uh, that the chief had proposed. I, I agree, I think that's something we need to do. And then it's our responsibility to figure out how we shift that over to the, uh, to the budget. We have two cycles, like I said. Um, with regard to the Healdsburg Jazz Festival, uh, I tend to agree with uh, Councilmember Gold. Um, I think we really do need to be careful on uh, how we allocate. You know, if we take twenty-five thousand dollars away from streets, you know, one of the things in here last year was fifteen thousand dollars for bike and pedestrian plan. So that's a plan that we spent fifteen grand that now can be used for uh, grant funds to expand the bike. And it, you're looking at things that are 
more than a, a one-year shot. And I, I would rather see, um, you know, funding for the Healdsburg Jazz Festival. And, you know, there, there's a difference between uh, when I met with them today, they talked about static art versus uh, live or, you know. Uh, and to me, the perfect place for that and I think it's a discussion we need to have sooner than later because I don't want this just pushed and kicked down the road, is um, under Parks and Rec, whether it's the Art Commission or, you know, we, we have some anticipated increase in, in TOTs with the new hotels opening. So I think that's a, a good place to fold that under. And that's something that we can discuss under goal setting to really run it under Parks and Rec. And so it's not just Healdsburg Jazz Festival, but, but it's the other nonprofits that we can we can run, and there's an ongoing source of revenue versus this, which I believe the voters' intent was, you know, you're looking at streets and city facilities and 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 things like that that are we're going to take this money and we're going to put it into our infrastructure and it's going to last a long time. So, recap: I I'm fine with the way that it's allocated as is. Um, I would. Uh, not support moving 25,000 from the streets. I would support option one uh, from the police chief. And that's it. Thank you. So listening to everybody, it's so interesting being the last to speak. Sometimes I can do it. I really can. Um, you know, when I filled this out uh, a few years before I was on council, and I just always think of faith. It's the faith, right? It's like, when I fill this out and I say, okay, I know it's not a scientific measure, and I understand that that's important to keep in mind tonight, but when I fill it out, I'm thinking, when I, I filled mine out, I was thinking, I, I want this to represent what I think we need now to, for, to fund vital city services and programs. So vital, you know, I think of heart, and I think of a lot of things that aren't just about uh, public safety, but I absolutely support option one. There's no denying that I, I could support that funding. Um, I could also support street maintenance at, at that level, but I have a hard time um, not supporting the 20th anniversary of the Jazz Festival, and I guess it's because music gets me through in this town. Music is a huge part of how I communicate as a human being, and, and I just, I think 20th anniversary, I don't think it's a precedent as much as it's a, a, com a, a commendation. Um, for the group of people that have been doing this. And um, I think 20 years is something to look at. Um, I also have no problem um, looking at it as a one-time deal. I don't think it sets a precedent. Um, as we look at faith building in our city and we look at our people that are that are willing to, uh, citizens, fill these out, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity in this. I mean, economic development. I thought housing un was under that, but, you know, it's, it's now we're, you know. So I think it, it's just what you value that year. And so I could definitely support the licensed reader. I could definitely support keeping the streets uh, going and, and solidifying them. But there's something about $100,000 for the keys. It just doesn't resonate with me at all. And so if we do that and we don't give $25,000 to the Jazz Festival on their 20th year, to me that just seems skewed. And I, I know it needs, we need to be safe uh, with keys, but... I just feel like that part, I have a hard time uh, justifying $100,000 um, for security and keyless access systems and not support what our community and what the vitality of music is in this town and what it does for so many people. And it's a real inclusive um, uh, festival. So I could support the festival. I don't know where the money's going to come from, but I, I think it would be a good gesture. I think the arts community is supporting us in so many ways that has nothing to do with money has to do with life and keeping us alive. So I have no problem with that, at least for this year. Um, chamber looks good. I'm, I'm really supportive of uh, anything we can do to continue to do what I believe our um, chamber director told us. Um, Executive Director Carla Howell gave me a letter, and I know we all got it. And I think that it's important that we keep collaborating with our business and do the outreach. But I really want to do a gesture this year for the arts community, and so I really see no problem with the $25,000 for that. So I could vote for that. Um, and then anything else, I, I, I'm pretty much in agreement with everybody else. I don't know where to take the twenty five grand from, but that 100000 keyless, okay, I've said it enough. I just think that, I don't know, does it have to cost that much? Um, is there some way to adjust that amount? So if, um, if I may, yeah, if, if it sounds like there's consensus. Um, from three to support the jazz festival, twenty-five thousand dollars. 
it looks like it appears there's consensus for everything else that staff pr provided, including hiring the full-time firefighter sooner than now as part of this. So we're talking about $25,000. If you would let, allow staff to come back and we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out um, to be able to fund the jazz festival where it has a minimal impact on the other funds. That, if that is okay. Would that work for, I mean, obviously we got three votes here, but I'm just, I don't like just going, you got the three. I, I think it's important to feel not just about the three, but breathe together, live together. It's okay. I mean, that's what it's about, right? So we so got I consensus. Understand you got, so I would like to make sure I hear from my fellow council members if they're a little nervous about starting. Like I did hear some concerns and arguments about it being a precedent. So just wondered about that. So does anybody want to? Yeah, thank you. you I, wanted wanted to, something. I wanted to talk about a few things, and I thought that um, I think that Councilman Reniokas with the, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to sitting across the table from you in our goal session because I think that's the time when um, a lot of the ideas that you've been talking about are really going to shine. And I think that um, both you and Vice Mayor Hagley just talked about, and Mayor Mansell just talked about some sort of an arts organization, and I know that I've spoken with, um, I've heard from Councilmember Gold about supporting the arts as well. And um, Vice Mayor Hagley, I I think you had a brilliant idea there of of having it under the umbrella of the of the uh, Parks and Rec, which I don't want to get into it right now because I think that that's for the Gold session. But um, I know that this can. This council supports the arts, and I know that we can do something about it. And I'm, I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of hope that, that we'll have that discussion in the in the goals session. But another thing that I, every year, we go through Measure V, and every year I kind of talk about the same thing, right? When so so I haven't I haven't talked about it yet, and that is the report card, right? So this this was a general fund tax. And it required 50% plus one to pass. And we laid out th four things that would be um, on this, paid for with this tax through the general fund. And I think that we've done a really good job of, of keeping to those things. And, and I think having streets as a priority was something that, you know, everybody uses them. And then, but also, you know, with public safety, that's also a very important part of Measure V, and public safety is about the people, right? I mean, it's the it's the firefighters, it's the police officers, the dispatchers. Those are the ones who do perform the work, and that's what the people wanted when we had Measure V. So if we have staff contained within Measure V, being paid for by Measure V, I think that that shows how important it is. And in a way, from a, from a from a fiscal standpoint, I think it's maybe a bad idea to have staff to be under this thing that sometime in the future we're going to have to vote on again, and there's some uncertainty there. But I think it also, when the time comes, it's going to show the voter this is what's on the line with Measure V. This is what we're able to fund. Look at all the stuff we've done to our streets our city facilities, economic development, and I'm just kind of heartened by all of the projects that Assistant City Manager Ipolite went over what we've already done, and I think that when the time comes, we're gonna have a good report card to give to the voters to say, let's let's keep going with this Measure V. And then on top of that, I believe, I believe it's something like 30 cents on the dollar. So for Healdsburg residents, they put in 30 cents, they get a dollar back. And I mean, it's just, it's a it's a win-win. So um, by standard spiel. And I concur. I think that anytime we can tell people that, like the Dry Creek Exchange or the Dry Creek Project, if we can get a sign, I talked to you about this city manager, just something visible so people know that this is another project funded by, it just is really nice for people to know. And I would call them instead of, voters, I call them citizens or taxpayers, you know, people that are here that really want to see evidence, like you said, um, Councilman um, McCaffrey, about keeping the faith, you know, because it is a tax, and I know some people are like, oh, yeah, but really, I think it's a, it's really important that we're explicit about how we're spending the money, and so I really appreciate some kind of a public relations, maybe our new um, 
public uh, relations R person can help us yeah, with that? Yeah, so actually, um, Madam Mayor, Council, so uh, we've talked to Rhea quite a bit about this, and she's developing a sign along with Public Works Director Zimmer. Um, as the spring, spring thaw comes, um, um, and you see more activity with streets and roads, you'll be seeing those signs popping up with regards to those projects, where they are, and, and how it's being funded. So that is definitely something that staff is working on, and we have some time as we start rolling out some of these street projects. Signage is important. May we do as well as Rock Pile Winery is right now. Thank you very much. Do it. We consensus. You're going to go wheel appears, around on it, 25 it, grand. It, it appears there's consensus moving forward, and so um, as part of the budget, you will see the you will see what you what you the direction you gave staff today will be basically embedded in the budget. Um, we will basically um, allow the chief to start the hiring process. I believe he already has a an internal candidate pool, which they done from the previous hiring. So that process will get started in earnest, um, and then we will come back with um, uh, these. Budget numbers is for you to formally adopt in June, but this this will this will be embedded in that. Okay, Councilman Yogis. Sure, I just would like to go back to to, uh, to my point about the sidewalks, and just to clarify, the, the, do we have enough? I mean, I, I didn't quite hear a, a, a consensus. Do we have a, a consensus that to, to ask? And maybe, first of all, do we understand what, what I'm saying? I think I'm saying like, look, 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 there's five hundred thousand allocated um, in the, in. The, in but we don't know exactly how it's. We heard that's not, that's not completely you know, defined what that's going to be. I think what I'm asking for is let's hold off on that until we have we go through goal setting, figure out a way to get the community input on how we spend that non. May I, uh, um, I think that the goal setting session is going to happen before the spring thaw, so I think that kind of the natural chain of things will be able to happen um, with the goal setting in that. I don't think that. That stuff's going to be allocated, but I get what you're saying. But I think it's a more appropriate conversation for um, for the goal setting. And thank you all for for supporting uh, once again, making decisions about a lot of money. And um, want to thank everyone for coming tonight and showing your support for your different different causes and work that you do for the city. It really means a lot to have all these wonderful public safety people in the room. I'm feeling it. Plus the jazz festival and a lot of interested citizens that want to support their, their causes. It's really a good night and it's nice to have the money. I'll tell you, that's, that's the great thing is, you know, you complain, but this is definitely um, worthy of our interest and it's, we're spending money that the city is generating through a sales tax that our voters supported. So let us do well with the money. And um, with that, I think we can close this meeting. All right. Adjourned.